Fade in. No, God! Fade in. Fade in. Fade in. Fade in. Fade in. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 I am the type of Star Wars fan that doesn't even have a favorite movie. I just want to live in the universe of Star Wars continually in perpetuity forever. So when people are like, what's your, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? I'm like, there is no Star Wars movie. There is only Star Wars. Ah, I'm gonna kill myself! I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault! The, the sequel movies were just the worst garbage ever. Last Jedi was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I wanted to leave the theater. But I was like, I can't, it's Star Wars, you know, I need to, like, I need to watch it, but man, was that bad. I think that um, the thing that George never did was maintain the status quo. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really important because- Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you! When I read eight, I told Ryan, I fundamentally disagree with virtually everything you've decided about my character. Who is this guy? How did the most optimistic, hopeful character in the galaxy turn into this hermit who says it's time for the Jedi to end. I, I read that and I said, what? I mean, that's not what a Jedi does. I mean, a Jedi is optimistic. A Jedi is, has tenacity. He never gives up. He doesn't secrete himself on an island, but you, you'll... Uh, what's, uh, what's the best kind of firework to buy? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? Where are your parents? Get sketchy. Back to you guys. So, so they wanted us to keep going. That Star Wars girl said, keep going. Okay, so... Yeah. We Wait, what are we talking about? I figured out how to monetize social justice warriors. <laughs> I have no love for He-Man. I, 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 I have no love for He-Man either, but he's got a place in, in the world in a comic book story. When I was a kid, I'd watch He-Man and Masters of the Universe when I got home from school. From 1981 to 82, it was a rich... I'm kind of retarded. to all of our Star Wars fans in China. <laughs> What's up all my UX Travel Droids and Wikis, it's Anna, also as a Star Wars girl. And today I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, Star Wars news, get this, people don't care about Star Wars anymore. So much so that I am the first one breaking news stories. It's absolutely bizarre. I was the first one to two uh, Star Wars stories. I was the first one that covered how they're trying to retcon, uh, or they're trying to explain how uh, Darth Sidious was able to survive and his, his whole plan uh, and why he was in the Rise of Skywalker and his whole cloning procedure and everything. I was the first one. To cover that. Then every so all of a sudden now all of these articles are writing articles about it. And I was like, yeah, I made a video about that a week ago. I thought I was late to the party on that because I was. I, I found the story like a week after it came out. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm really late to this. But I feel like I, I kind of want to talk about it. And then the whole Slave One fiasco. I did a video on that. And I've kind of been covering it since then because people through temper tantrums over me making a video about that. Like, they're like, Anna, why did you make a video about that? I was like. Well, do you, did you watch the video? I explained why I made the video about it, and it's like, it's like I, I like how you've you don't watch my content, but you're upset now because I'm making a video about this thing. It's like, hmm, it's weird. People people are strange the way that they like the things that bother them, things they want explanations for. But so I was like, all right, well, I've been kind of following the story. I I went to the Lego store and I talked to the people there because bully as much as people want to say, Oh, ha ha ha. If somebody works in retail, they don't know anything. The people in retail have the product months and months before uh, the things get released. I mean, heck when I was, you know, in high school and in college, I had retail jobs. And I remember when I was working, you know, part-time for like Disney for a little bit. I mean, I saw all of like the merch for uh, The Force Awakens before anyone saw it. And so it was like, I mean, if this person that I'm talking to is right, which they were, they said, oh, it's not Slave One because, uh, you know, they're going to have toys. Uh, what is it? Uh, let's see. You're living up to your name. I am. I am. I am, aren't I? And so uh, I was like, yeah, they, they just named it the class of the ship, right? 
And so I did a video on that and people were like, why did you do a video on that? originally and then i followed up because another article came out saying oh yeah that that is what they're going to name it and then all of a sudden now people are finding out about it i was like that this is old news this is old news where the heck were you apparently i'm the only one that follows star wars stuff so actually i figured there's this new thing which i broke the news again today guys i breaking news nobody knew about this or at least i didn't see anyone this this wonderful new star wars character and i was the I was like, people were like, is this real? I was like, it's on the Star Wars website. Am I the only one that checks this? Am I the only one that somewhat cares about Star Wars? Eh, I guess so. But uh, so yeah, meet uh, what uh, Silvestri Yarrow. They haven't made an animatic for it, to be fair. But so this uh, this wonderful character, uh, I came across it because, uh, as you know, this this lady who has me blocked on Twitter, uh, she. Oh my goodness. So she did a uh, an interview about her book with this lady who was the one who is a so-called Star Wars lore expert. She had to explain that in her uh, opening blog post, I guess, where she was trying to say, a Star Wars lore expert explains how Darth Sidious was able to survive and that's why he's in the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, let me grab this super chat. Uh, oh my God, thank you for the super chat. Is the Cecil Mr. Cecil Meister still alive? Yes, he is alive. I have heard from them. He's just on vacation, but thank you for the super chat. I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, let's see, Borg Pork, thanks for the super chat, dude. Anna, did you see the video I was talking about? No! Shit, I keep forgetting. Let me know in the regular chat and I will take a screenshot. Um, okay, so I have a couple topics we can talk about. We can just, I can read you this whole uh, interview thing from this lady. Uh, or or we can go through this article that I found, which was uh, why, the name of the, the title of this stream, which is Six Star Wars Comics Reveals That Enhance uh, the Original Trilogy. So uh, which one do you guys want? Do you guys want six Star Wars comics that reveal a re six Star Wars comics reveals that enhance the original trilogy? Or do you want me to go into the Justina Ireland interview? Which one? Which one? Which one? I'd rather not. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's going to be torture. Uh, I know. Enhanced Dr. Coffin Nails. I know. Puke. Gross. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Spider-Man trailer. I was going to do a video on that. I recorded it. I have it. I don't know if I'll get struck for it or not, but, uh, you never know, right? You never, never, ever know. Uh, the interview. Okay. The Justina Ireland interview. All right. I'm going to play for you. Just, I want you guys to remember who this woman is, right? Okay. So this is who this woman is. I, uh, found this uh, interview of her. So I'm going to play this for you guys. So remember all of this that I'm about to play for you before. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm not sharing audio. Okay. Let me, let me redo that. So remember all of this before, uh, I shouldn't call it, uh, all, all of this stuff before I start uh, playing the, uh, or reading the interview. So here we this is the lady writing Star Wars, ladies and gentlemen. I was just wondering, where do you get your inspiration from when you're writing? Um, I'm really angry. Um, so angry. <laughs> and the world just keeps giving me more inspiration. Um, yeah, I, for a lot of things, um, my inspiration is what makes me move. And what makes me move is rage. Um, other people's love. Other people is just telling a story. So, um, so like... <laughs> I don't like read long books um, unless they like really pull me in. Um, and I tend to write, when I read historical fiction, I tend to read it for perspectives that you don't get in the classroom or you don't get like every time, like for the July comes around. I'm like, I don't need another story about George Washington, right? Like I know what the dude did. Like I, yeah, we get it, George. Um, but I think like, I really wanna know like those perspectives that we haven't heard traditionally through history. Um, I was in college the first time I realized that like history wasn't all just like white dudes. It's like, oh crap, there are other people there too. Thanks Howard Zinn. Look, historians do it all the time, man. Like your, all your history books are like the story that some dude decided was the truth, right? So like, okay, so like, um, 
my my undergrad is in history and like I almost finished a I almost finished a master's in history and then I went and did an MFA instead because um thank you um because I that's what I do with my life I never finish things um but the thing about history is it's all about people and it's all about people reacting to the events of the time and if you know people and the people mindset of that time you can change history to say whatever you want it to be like i didn't know until this year that the civil war was not about slavery like that's that's amazing guys like all this time i thought it was about slavery it's about economics apparently <laughs> even <laughs> in case or states rights one of those two outstanding intelligence right there um so yeah that's the woman that they picked to write star wars also i don't i did not think that you know me not a history major i didn't think that i would ever have to say this to someone i was just wondering oh, where do you get your jesus don't play it again but um economics well, let, let's look at the southern states during pre-Civil War. What did their economy rely on? Oh, yeah, they, they had huge cotton exports, right? Okay, who picked the cotton? Who was their entire <laughs> economy based on? Oh, my God, that's right, having slaves. That's why the South didn't want to get rid of slavery, because they relied on them for their income, because they had free labor holy shit mind blown so yes it was about slavery so yeah that is um the lady that's writing star wars so just take that in mind uh as we get into this interview because i guess you guys would ra you guys would rather uh, me you want me to read this interview by her which a reminder this lady that's interviewing her emily uh whose name i cannot remember she is the star wars lore expert self-proclaimed star wars lore expert that knows absolutely nothing about star wars also jeff the killer thank you for the super chat even though you didn't say anything thank you thank you thank you all right now take in mind everyone i'm severely dyslexic before i get into this so this is spoiler talk justina ireland shines a light on out of the shadows the author goes deep with StarWars.com about her new book and continuation of the High Republic series. <laughs> okay, here we go. A spoiler warning, this article discusses details and plot points from Star Wars High Republic Out of the Shadows. I'm sure we're all uh, clutching our pearls there. Let me, oh shoot, let me fix this real fast. Oh my goodness, do you guys hear Tula barking like crazy? Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Justina Island, Star Wars, The High Republic, Out of the Shadows debuted last month, marking the second release in a new wave of High Republic stories. Also, I'm going to post this link in the chat if you guys want to follow along with me. Here you guys go. Uh, if you guys ever want Star Wars news, I swear, ju just go look at StarWars.com. This is where all this stuff comes from. Okay, uh, this young adult novel brings back some familiar faces like the Master Padawan uh, duo Vanestra Rowe and Imari Cantoris, uh, but also introduces new characters into the era like the protagonist Silvestri y uh, Yarrow. Which is this. This is Sylvester Yarrow. So this is a brand new character. A lot of people are saying it's a self-insert. And then a lot of other people are saying it's like, uh, where is it? Oh, this this chick from uh, Solo. So I was like, yeah, it looks a lot like the chick from Solo. But, uh, you know, creativity is dead with these people. Also, guys, there is over 200 people here. Please. Oh, I got pickups. Please smash the like button, please. And thank you. Uh, Right, um, but also introduces new characters into the era, like, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, uh, pfft, uh, before the Republic can even catch a break following the tragedy at the Republic Fair, the Nile are once again up to no good. Remember, the Nile are the bad guys that use gas to knock out their victims. It's like, hmm, if only they had gas masks exist. Is If only, you know, one of the most iconic characters in Star Wars you know, I think that he would probably be fine. Let me see. Where is that character? Oh, do I want to? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll just grab. Eh. Do I have any that aren't, like, stuck? I, I pulled out an action figure the other day and it knocked everything over. Who's this? Uh, I can't use him. Who's got a fucking mask next to me? Uh, fuck it. I'll just grab this. So, uh, well, this is Luke Skywalker. But uh, I put, uh, I couldn't find the Darth Vader that this belonged to. But it's like, oh, my gosh. It's almost as if uh, they don't have masks in the Star Wars universe that could, like, filter out smoke and stuff. It's almost as if I had the mask for this one that, uh, you know, it, it could work. But uh, whatever. Whatever. That, that doesn't exist. It's almost as if... 
they don't have these things called droids that wouldn't get affected by toxic gas to organic life forms. But that, that's what the Nile use. They, they send toxic gas to their victims and then they kill them and take everything. But also it's like, well, the Republic is, it, it straight up says in all of those little animatics that the Republic is encroaching on their space. And so the Republic is expanding. And so they're going into parts of the galaxy that were formerly unknown to them and they're taking over this space. So it's like, so the Nile are defending their home from foreign invaders. Hmm. All right, so they're, they're terrible. My connection sucks. Oh, no. It looks fine on my screen. It looks completely fine. But uh, whatever. Yeah, bad fan fiction. No fucking shit, dude. No shit it is. All right, so let's see. Uh, the Nile are once again up to no good, this time with a gravity well projector. After Silvestri and her crew, the ship, the switchback, that's the name of her ship, is the Switchback, uh, are yanked out uh, of hyperspace and forced to abandon ship. Sylvie inadvertently uncovers that the Nile are creating a super weapon, and worse, her thought-to-be-dead mother is the lead scientist on the project. Oh, no! Uh, now that we've had some time to read and think about Out of the Shadows, StarWars.com spoke with Justina Ireland for a spoiler-filled dive into all the mischief and deceit in her new book. If, you're, uh, if you've yet to read out of the shadows feel free to check out starwars.com spoiler free kickoff interview with ireland oh my well we're gonna read the spoiler filled one why are there a's in the chat but uh thank you thank you for the a's i don't know what they're for press a oh ah oh, thank you force ghost fabio that was kind mm. all right here we go this sounds like rogue one all over again yeah no shit they they were in <laughs> It's impossible for them to come up with anything original. And you know what's sad is you know that these people know nothing about Star Wars is because that is basically part of, you know, some plot points in Rogue One. But also the fact that they're completely unaware because I read through this uh, interview and one of the things Justina says is that, oh, well, this has never been done before. It's like, I've never seen something like this before. And it's like, oh, my God, sweet Jesus. No. All right, here we go. StarWars.com, let's get into the spoilers of Out of the Shadows right out of the gate. Uh, the book opens with Silvestri Yarrow and her crew of sh uh, of the switchback being pulled out of hyperspace and having to abandon ship. Talk to me about writing that sequence. <clears throat> Justina Ireland, I always know that if you're going to, oh, that's not how she talks, but I'm not going to imitate how she talks, uh, going to introduce a new character in Star Wars, you do it up front. There's no more jarring than being uh, two thirds uh, through a book and someone's like, new character. So let's just start with our regular old uh, human pilot. I've always been fascinated with this idea of a gravity well uh, pr projectors that can kick a ship out of hyperspace. I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that this is something that's been fascinating her that she's thought about for days and months on end. Uh, I highly doubt that. Uh, you have to assume that anything the Empire did in the original trilogy had been uh, in research for years, maybe millennia, because that's how our world works. Cell phones. I, okay, here's the thing. That's how our world works. Yes. Where is Star Wars? A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away crazy a uh, cell phone didn't just start with a cell phone it's not like someone someday was like you know what'd be great a way to talk that fits in your pocket well i mean somebody did that man was you know gene roddenberry and there was communicators in star trek but i mean yeah as far as like just making it yeah i i, I get it we didn't e immediately have that technology but it's like you know Come on. It, it just blows my mind. Uh, and then cell phones. We had old school phones, uh, rotary phones, and then we had digital phones. And it was really exciting when people did call forwarding and you could do two line calling. Uh, and then eventually we got cell phones. So I've always wondered what the baby steps were uh, that the Empire took to get to things like the Death Star or gravity well projectors or even the tracking technology we see the First Order use in the sequel trilogy. 
Well, I'd hate to break it to you, but I mean, this kind of stuff, I, I go play KOTOR again. There is so much Star Wars lore out there. And you would think that the she, she's being interviewed by Disney's Disney Star Wars's lore expert, right? Like this, when this lady, uh, Emily writes her articles, she gives a little intro about how she is a Star Wars lore expert. So you would think that a Star Wars lore expert would point out, well, you do realize that there's this thing called KOTOR. And if you go all the way back to the Knights Republic era, they did have a lot of this technology already. It just, there's, you know, little things that change as time goes on. So, I mean, if you, if you knew anything about Star Wars, and then this is their big reveal. But did you guys notice, and I pointed this out earlier, that they didn't really do, because uh, before when they were announcing all of their new Star Wars characters, that was like the thing. And I even went and I Googled this character because I wanted to find like a little backstory and they don't have anything for her. It's literally just this interview and like a few times that she's mentioned in other interviews and books. So it's like, hmm, they're really not, they're trying to not highlight these things like they would have before. Uh, El Bandido de... Uh, Jovas, thank you for the super chat. Hola, uh, uh, hola, sta chica de Star Wars. Uh, why, uh, buenas noches. Uh, hello, I don't speak Spanish, so I apologize. I apologize. I got through that pretty well, though. I got through that pretty well. All right, so let's get back to this. So yeah, this is their big, and I'll get the, the picture that I have up here on Twitter so it's easier for you guys to see. So that was their big announcement for this character. They didn't take any time. Uh, you know, They didn't highlight this character in any other way. They made no other formal announcements like they did with all of the other characters, which it's like, aren't you guys all about like diversity? And it's like you put Avar Chris, who's like a, you know, what, a, a white woman, which they all consider bad. It's like, Okay, well, you gave her front and center, but then you just kind of swipe this character under the bus. It's almost as if you don't really care about any of your new characters and you don't care about the higher public, right? Let me try to see on a different... Let me go try to pull up the Disney Star Wars page and see if this is up there. Uh, let's just look at the Star Wars channel. It depends about when I type in Star Wars. It doesn't take me to the official Star Wars channel. I wonder why. Okay, let's see. Let's see, is there an animatic for this character? Oh my god, there's not. Whoa, how shocking. Yeah, the last animatic was came out four months ago and it has an 18% approval rating. Not very good. I would be embarrassed. So, 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 so. <clears throat> Let me get a drink on this. So yeah, no hi no highlighting of this character of any kind. They released this concept art, which I did notice was by a completely different artist than the one that was doing the other ones. I was like, oh, and you know what sucks is they don't even allow the artists to, like leave their signature. Most, uh, if you are doing concept art, you are usually allowed to have like some kind of signature put in there because you want people to see that unless you are working for the company and you know, it's just the stamp of this is star wars which maybe it's going on with this but uh yeah they, they i can tell that they really care about this character considering they didn't do anything to highlight it aside from throwing this in i wasn't expecting to see this character design in this article and that's why when i posted this on twitter people were like is that real i'm like yep yep it's real it's fucking real all right let's finish uh reading her answer to this question uh that was where uh really where i wanted to start i thought what would be more jarring to a pilot than being kicked out of hyperspace? Oh my God. It's like a car crash. Uh, because everything they know about hyperspace is like you're in time and space bubble of you. When you come out, you're in real space. But when you're in hyperspace, nothing can touch you. If you're already having a bad day like Sylvester was and something that's supposed to be impossible does happen, you're just like, what the hell? I wanted to start with uh, that high tension, high anxiety moment with Sly uh, that for her is the inciting incident. I like how she's trying to use like uh, screenwriting terminology. It's like she, re she read uh, Save the Cat, right? And so now she's, in her she's using the terminology from that book in this interview. Uh, Josh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's a funny name. Thank you, Mr. Jet. So creators want to replace heroes from for the sin of what? Not being black seems... Uh, shows will only take and destroy things ever create. Thank you for the super chat. I don't know this woman's politics. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can assume political leanings, but I mean, I don't really like to get their political background behind or, you know, what 
I, I don't know anything about this woman's politics, uh, and nor do I care. Uh, I don't really think that has to do with your ability to write a story. Uh, it's like, I don't know what Beethoven's politics were, right? I, I have no idea. I don't care either. Uh, so I don't think that has anything to do with his ability uh, to, you know, compose things. And just like her, I mean, she, again, she did that uh, that interview that I showed of her where she was talking about her um, her education <laughs> and how she doesn't finish things and how she doesn't finish reading books and stuff. And it's like, well, I just feel like all of these people, like they should literally just hire a super fan and have that super fan hire their other super fan friends and each person that is in charge of writing anything in in Disney Star Wars have that person have a direct phone line to that person and whenever they have a question call them be like this and unfortunately they kind of do have that person and that person is Pablo Hidalgo which is absolutely terrible for them which is why they get so much shit wrong about Star Wars but it's like e even this whole thing okay so I know people get on my case for this because I always like bring up Star Trek points but I mean if you really wanted to do something like this it has been it has been done before in other sci-fi genres and a really good one would be to go watch Star Trek and go check that out. Uh, but they, they won't do that. They have no interest. Uh, Wolfie, thank you for the super chat. The story of Kate Skywalker and Darth Crate will always be the true sequel trilogy in my eyes. Check it out if you haven't yet. I have, uh, is, do I have one of the action figures up here? I have like a bunch of expanded universe action figures. I feel like I know a lot more about what happens prior to the prequels than I do about what comes after because it's kind of harder to find, but uh, I do have some. I have some, and they're always like random little things, but yeah, who is it that's like loves that character? I think it's Lethal Lightning. I think Lethal Lightning likes Kate Skywalker. Is that, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. I feel like I just spend all my time yelling at him to get me a freaking koala. Uh, let's see, but all of those stories are vastly better than anything Disney Star Wars has come up with because all of the expanded universe the thing with that is that it was people that they love Star Wars and they wanted to tell these stories about these characters in this universe and it was that passion project right it wasn't where they're just doing it well I'm sure that you know the people back then they wanted a paycheck too but it's not, it, this is just virtue signaling. These people don't care about Star Wars because if your exciting incident is that they got kicked out of, oh my God, they had car trouble. It's like, yeah, Han Solo had fucking car trouble too and Empire Strikes Back, right? That's why he's in half of the situations he's in in that movie is because there's a problem with hyperdrive. Oh my God. So this is the brand new thing. It's like, okay, so you had a hot problem with hyperspace. Yes, I know that's not hyperdrive, but it's like you just have the exact same basic premise is that, okay, there's car trouble, which is why they're in this situation. But if you're only, and you know, then that's when the real problem presents itself. It's like, okay, shit hit the fan. You know, you got a flat tire, you're stuck in this situation and the bad guys are there. Okay, that's a common trope throughout a lot of movies where shit hits the fan, it doesn't go the way that the main characters or the protagonist wants, and so they're stuck in this bad situation. And then the next thing happens. So the way that this is going, it's sounding like that's the bad thing that happens in this book as compared to this is one of the things and then the bad stuff happens. It's like, what what are they even doing? Um, anyway. Anyways, let's get back into this. Oh, let me read this real fast. Uh, El Bandito de Juves. Uh, koalas are illegal to keep as pets outside of Australia, but they are cuter animals. For instance, you can tame wild chipmunks with food. Shush. Shush, shush, shush. I totally don't want a real koala bear. Wink, 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 wink. Uh, okay, anyways, let me finish. Let me finish this. I, I feel like this is going to be a long stream of me going through this. Also, everyone, there's over 300 people watching. Thank you so much for being here. I know, like, everyone is streaming tonight, so I appreciate you guys spending time with me. Please smash the like button if you haven't already. That would be awesome of you. And, yes, I did do a stream earlier today, so if my energy is a little bit lower, I'm trying to keep it up. I took a little break. I had some dinner, which was great. I made me and Peach's steak with fruit and pasta. It was great, and then I took my little puppy princess for a walk and uh got back here so I, I rejuvenated i'm getting the caffeine so my it's got the bubbles making my tummy you know be all alive so i don't fall asleep and uh yeah it's good it's good 
Anyways, who else is streaming tonight? Everyone. I looked on my streaming thing. Everyone is streaming. I'm like, Jesus. I guess it's a popular streaming night. But anyways. Oh, what's up, Sav? Everyone say hi to Sav. Everyone say hi. Sav, Sav, Sav. All right. So let's get back into this. Anyways, as I go on to other tangents. But here we go. Uh, like Sylvester was and something that's supposed to be impossible does happen. You're just like, what the hell? I wanted to start with that high tension, high anxiety moment with Sly. That for her is the inciting incident. That's what sets her off on her journey. It happens that we get, uh, that in the prologue. So everybody knows, uh, she's going to be here. She's going to be part of the story. It's not just going to be another Vanessa Rowe and Imari story. All right. So who cares about the main characters? Let's get this brand new one going uh starwars.com the opening I, I i mean so is this not the emily chick interviewing her or is it just somebody from starwars.com i don't know why are the words so little do you guys want me to be like this do you guys want to be like that so you guys can read or do you guys want to see my facial expressions as i read it let's see uh which one do you want which one do you want do you guys want this one or do you guys want this one? I guess this is one. Put a one in the chat if you want me to read it like this. Or a two in the chat if you want me to read it like this. Pick one. Uh, I put. I think I put this in the... I'll put this in the chat again if you guys want to read along. Uh, Anna's screen. Okay. Okay, everyone put a one. All right. <laughs> you guys can see me roll my eyes. You guys can see me roll my eyes for that. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> Uh, the opening immediately brings forward the mystery of the novel, which is what is happening in this sector of space? How is this happening? And for those who've read Out of the Shadows, we know that the Tempest Runner, La Lorna D., who wrote these names, uh, has facilitated the creation of this super weapon called the Gravity's Heart. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, talk readers through Lorna D.'s mischievousness in the book. Justina Ireland. <clears throat> okay, this is this is kind of how she gets on her little tangent about how she doesn't like capitalism. So I I got the the super chat from earlier. I guess they they already read this. Uh, okay, so here we go. Justina Ireland. Yeah, it's like plots on plots on plots. Laughs. <laughs> she does that too. She likes it. She uses like all the time, which I am now catching myself doing. Uh, but so. Yes, gravity, really, gravity's heart. I know, I know. And you guys want to know what gravity's heart is? It's a machine that does something with gravity, because they don't explain it very well, that pulls people out of hyperspace. That is the big bad weapon. Imagine. Oh, yeah, this is the woman that invented hyperspace tripping, which I did cover as well. I didn't see anyone else cover that. It's like, it's because nobody cares about Star Wars. Those videos get terrible views, but I mean... I'm not Star Wars girl. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to talk about this because I don't, I don't think that this is right. I think that this is wrong. I think it's people working on Star Wars that don't like Star Wars. And, you know, I'm going to continue to call it out. But, uh, and I just, it's like, I want to talk about this because who else am I going to talk about this with, right? I can go talk to my boyfriend as much as I want. And he's just like, oh, that, that's interesting, babe. And I can go to call my mom. She's like, Anna, it's just a movie. And I'm like, mom, you don't understand. I can talk to my friends. But even then they're just like, oh, okay. It's like, it's hard. It's really hard. So it's like, I got to vent to my people, you know, which are you guys, because you guys get me, you guys get my frustration, right? All right. So let's get back into this. Okay. Let me, let me try this. Yeah. It's like plots on plots on plots. <laughs> uh, Lorna D's not dumb. She's a survivor. Let's Google. Do they have an image for Lorna D? Let me, let me try it in this star Wars, uh, search engine paste. Let's see. Does she have a, oh, it's, it's this person, Lorna D. Oh, is, oh, so this is a chick, the big bat of the Nile. This is supposed to be a girl. What? I guess it's like a Twi'lek, right? Oh my goodness. It is. It's a girl. They, they made it look like a dude. All right. All right. Here, let's, let's go on Google. You guys like my tulips background? My tulips background is tulips. It's like my princess. Uh, Ruben Wilson, thank you for the super chat. It says hand. Interesting. Thank you. All right. So, okay. Oh, I guess it, I guess we knew it was a girl. Oh, okay. That's a different image than I saw. All right. So we knew that this one was a chick. Oh, is this another one? Oh, is that a fixed one? 
that one looks better. Her hair looks nice in that one. And it actually looks like a chick's face. It's like Pocahontas inspired. Okay, so, okay, so this is this chick. What the heck is this? Let me see. What, what? No, scroll over. Scroll over. What? Is that supposed to be like a Mando helmet? It's like supersize me all the way. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to this. Uh, Lorna D is not dumb. She's a survivor. Could you imagine you're the bad guy and your name is Lorna D? Really? Lorna D. All right. Uh, all right, here we go. Darth Feminist. Oh, really? Is she? Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Uh, she's a survivor. Even though uh, Marcinio Rowe might be thinking four steps forward, Lorna D is thinking ten steps ahead. Okay, so, oh, yeah, so this is the bad guy, right? They did the whole animatic about this dude. Oh, so the whammon is better? Oh, my God, of course she is. Even though they marketed that they're led by this dude, Macchio Rowe. She is the better one because she's thinking a billion times ahead. Oh my gosh. Hashtag the force is female. Hashtag slay queen. Yes. That's that's what they're doing here. All right. Uh, if you like Lorna D in Out of the Shadows, you really have to pick up Cav Scott's The Tempest Runner audio, which is not out yet. But guess what? This dude blocked me on Twitter and lied about me because I, I didn't know that he had a Twitter. And then I found out he had a Twitter because I was blocked. And because people were like posts, like retweeting something. And I always do this on Twitter is I see it and I can't see what they tweeted. And so I'm like, hey, and I click on like the link because there's always like a little thing and it shows me their page and it just says you're blocked. And I'm like, hey, I'm blocked. What does it say? And it's like a joke now. It's like how like how many times can Anna do that? It's like I'm blocked by 90% of Twitter at this point. But I found that I was blocked. And I think I have the screenshot somewhere. But he was basically saying like fate. Without naming my name, he's like, yes, I block certain people because they come into my mentions and they start fights with and they make homophobic slurs and stuff like that. And I was like, I didn't know who you were until I found out I was blocked. And also, I don't start fights on Twitter. People start fights with me. I post something on my timeline and people lose their fucking minds. That, and that, they come into my mentions. So it's like, excuse you. Don't even start with me. Uh, but he blocked me anyways. I was like, ooh, ooh, alpha male energy right there. Uh, Bart Silverstein, thank you for the super chat. Uh, which name, uh, with a name like that, will she have an L on the forehead of her helmet? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, yeah, I know. What, what, was it like Marie from the Aristocats? Lady doesn't start fights, but she can finish them. That was a terrible little accent. I was always Burlio. Me and my sisters, we always did that when we watched movies, so we would call, like, characters. And the Aristocats was perfect because that was literally us. I'm Burlio, the little black kitten with, like, the red bow tie. Ellen was Toulouse, the little orange one. And then uh, Emily was Marie. And so, like, that was perfect. But, uh, yeah, it makes me sad. Uh, anyways, let's get back to this. Uh, we talked about the storytelling there. And even when I was writing Out of the Shadows, we were talking back and forth about Lorna D and what was going on in the Rising Storm. I also think it's really cool to see how families that are wealthy don't necessarily have clean hands. Oh, lovely. So yes, this is the part where she's like, oh yeah, if you're rich, you're, you're kind of dirty. It's like, what about people that were like born into wealth? Or also, it's like, what about, you know, I mean, yeah, I know that that is kind of a stereotype that, you know, rich people get into badness, but uh, let, let's let's keep reading because it's like, girl, you're really not one to talk considering you're working for the mouse and the people that you're working for, you know, you know, uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, that was the part of the storytelling. I was like, who's going to fund this super weapon? Oh, this this part is ridiculous. Uh, when I was a kid watching G.I. Joe, I was like, where's Cobra getting his money from? They're always like, this doomsday device uses lava and ice crystal and deep sea water, and we're going to destroy cities and turn them into uh, miniatures. And I was like, cool, who's paying these scientists? I highly doubt any child said this. I can understand if she's, like, watching, like, her niece or nephew or, like, she's watching her friend's kid and they're doing that and she as an adult is having these questions. But it's like, okay, let me just explain something to you. Where do bad guys get money? Well, what do bad guys do to get money? 
is it is there that concept of like stealing and robbery the, those are usually associated with bad guys right yeah yeah okay and then also like exploiting people for maybe i don't know third world countries and getting them to do like ba labor for basically nothing and just you know again exploiting people also in a big galaxy where you can find a planet that has all of these resources and has you know an underdeveloped Un, uh, underdeveloped society and using your big brute strength to intimidate them into doing the work for you so the yacht way you don't kill them it's almost like you can extort things but i don't know i don't know it's kind of like the where do bad guys get money oh yeah they're fucking bad guys they do bad things and that's how they get their money they could go and kill a bunch of people and get their money it's like really is it that hard of a concept apparently it is apparently it is a fucking rocket scientist some people but whatever uh yeah here you go exactly delta extortion theft human trafficking most likely exactly exactly um uh because they gotta eat so that was part of the thing do they gotta eat do they gotta eat do you think they're gonna feed all them people mm. uh steven uh lantro thank you super chat uh lorna d and d Raimi, oh, Lorna D and Do Raimi, uh, the sock master and artificial gravity. Well, Star Wars is saved, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fun. Uh, let's see. Yes, Cobra has many operations, legitimate in other ways. But see, that that's exactly what I was saying. It's like, I don't think she actually watched G.I. Joe. I think she she was babysitting someone else's child that was watching it. And she's just like, what, what, what? Because there's no, kids don't think about that kind of stuff. They don't, they have no concept of like money or how the world works because they're kids. They're kids. I remember being a kid saying like that the president of the United States should be a kid because everything would be better. And my parents thought, I would, they're like, Anna, that's not how the world works. I'm like, exactly. That's not. Let's make it work. Let's put a kid in charge and the kids will, will all get free toys. Like that was the kind of stuff that kids think about, you know? All right, here we go. Uh, so that was part of the thing. Who does Lorna know? What are her connections? Who is she? I know who she is because Cav and I talked about it, but this is kind of the beginning. What is Lorna D about? Because in Light of the Jedi, she's just kind of there in the background. She's kind of that chick. And now it's like, oh, Lorna D is making moves and that's really cool. And I really wanted to have this. It's not even a prototype. It's like proto prototype of something we're going to see later in the storytelling. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. How exciting. All right. <clears throat> Next question. Take a drink break. <clears throat> oh, uh, Ruben Wilson, thank you for the super chat. Show me the money. Well, I maybe we'll get an explanation on this, but uh, the way that this chick does things, I don't think we're going to get very much. She, she, it's like she's intelligent, but I, there's like a level that she's not breaking past, which again, as an author, if she would have actually read more books and maybe sat through college and actually got a degree, uh, maybe it would be a little bit different. Or honestly, I feel like all of these people that do these kind of things, they need to take a business class, right? I had to take a business class in college. And honestly, that was probably the most beneficial class that I took to my career because without that, I wouldn't know how to do anything, right? I took, I feel like two classes that were absolutely crucial was a public speaking class that taught me how to, you know, stop rambling as much, which obviously I'm still struggling with, but it was a public speaking class and it was, you know, basically how to present as an artist, how to pitch your creative ideas to somebody that has no creative mindset whatsoever. So it's like a person that only sees numbers, only, you know, stockholders, this stockholders, that or shareholders, that like completely left brain and how you were supposed to get them to give you money to make your movie, animation, video game, etc. And so that was a very beneficial class as far as how to, you know, present and speak to somebody that does not really understand what it is that you're trying to convey. And then also a, you know, just a intro to business class, just kind of breaking that stuff down and understanding how things work. And so I feel like if any of these people did that on any level, or if they actually tried to create their own business and run it, they would, uh, I do ramble on. I, I know I still do. I feel like I've gotten worse because of live streaming. No offense. 
I love you guys, but I feel like live streaming, I just, I tend to like get distracted and go off as compared to if I was giving a presentation, it's a little bit different, especially when I'm giving like a, a very formal presentation and I'm trying to pitch something to people. Uh, let's see. Um, did I read this one? I think I did read that one. I, did I see another one come up? Uh, Oh, here we go. Uh, Julian Ray's thank you, Mr. Bad. Hello, first super chat to the channel. Oh, thank you. Uh, already talk. Uh, did we already talk about the teaser, uh, the Spider-Man teaser trailer? Uh, I kind of mentioned it that I had. I did like a screen recording because I knew it was going to get taken off the internet. I haven't talked about it. I mean, if you guys want, I can do a video on it. I just really don't care about Marvel anymore. After Endgame, I'm like, I don't really care, you know. So. I don't know. I guess I can talk about it later, but I'm going to try to finish this uh, this interview first, if you guys don't mind. Also, guys, there's over 300 people here. Please smash the like button, please, and thank you. It would be awesome of you. All right, let's get back into this. Oh, the trailer dropped? It's not just the, the spoiler or the leak of the trailer? The trailer actually came out? All right. Maybe they released it early because of the leak. I don't know. It looks good, Anna. Okay, I'll I'll take a look. I'll take a look after I'm done with this live stream. Then. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Let me finish reading this. In relation to Gravity's heart, the devastating part is that uh, Chansey Yarrow, Sly's thought to be dead mother, is actually working with the Nile to create this machine. Why did she opt to fake her death instead of inviting Sly along from the beginning? Do you think she had invited Sly along from the beginning? Things would have gone differently. Or do you think Chansey now, uh, Chansey now she had fake, do you mean new? You didn't even spell this right? Or did you think Chansey knew she had to fake her death to get away with it? Typo! That's bad when I catch a look. I'm going to make a bigger look. She did it wrong. Or did Chansey know she had to fake her death? Oh, did I not do it? Did I do it wrong? Is it supposed to be no? Let me read that again. Or did Chansey know she had to fake her death to get away with it? I feel like it sounds better if she had to say new. I don't know. Uh, Or did Chansey... Okay, I guess I am wrong. I guess I am wrong. I don't know. Brain fart. Anyways, anyways. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I feel like it would be better to go with me. Or did Chansey, did Chansey, yeah, okay. Never mind. Never mind. I'm having a brain fart. I failed. See what happens. Uh, Justine of Ireland. Uh, I think uh, Chansey knows her daughter well enough that Sly for, uh, all her laps in judgment would never willingly join with the Nile. It's really why it's important to have Nan's point of view uh, in the story as well, because what drives someone to hitch their wagon uh, to the start, especially when the star is murdering, pillaging, and leaving everywhere you go in smoldering ruin. It's like what makes you think, yeah, that's a group I'm going to hang out with. So I think for Chansey, it was really about trying to give Sly the opportunity to see this is how bad it is when you're by yourself and trying to make a go of it. Now, Sly knows Chansey's not exactly happy to be with the Nile, but you can come hang out and do this as well. There's an opportunity here. Of course, Sly is going to say no because she's not a monster. Again, this is the plot of Rogue One. Like, to a fucking T. This is a plot of Rogue One, but whatever. There's also that weird thing where you don't necessarily see your parents as adults until you're an adult, and a lot of this is questioning their choices, right? It's a wait, what? Who doesn't see their parents as an adult? I mean, that's one of the things as a kid. It's like, yeah, my parent is a grown up, you know? I don't know. That doesn't really make sense to me, but uh, whatever. Let's see. It's a circle of life. When I got older, I started questioning my parents' choices. When my daughter gets older, she'll start questioning my choices. Oh, she does have a kid. Uh, and I think that's how you make your own identity. And for Sly, a lot of it is stepping away from what her mother has done and what her mother has built uh, and asking, what does she know? What did she know what was purposeful and what's a lie and how much is her just saying it's because it's uh it's the convenient thing to say isn't that what kids ask their parents from the very beginning i don't know 
Yeah, see, the hardest thing is getting your parents to see you as an adult. Exactly. Anna's pixelated. I know. I just saw my thing go all weird. I don't know what's going on, but uh, that's unfortunate. Hopefully it gets back. But yeah, I feel like this is kind of a reverse statement, but I don't know. This lady doesn't exactly seem like the most sound-minded individual. Uh, StarWars.com. Another diving factor, a driving factor of the book is that Vanestra's visions. Oh, this is the force tripping chick. If you guys didn't see my video. In this book, it is introduced that there is this character called Vanessa Rowe who has force tripping abilities, which is basically she just gets visions like that. That's all it is. But they wanted to name it something else. She calls it tripping. Oh, my God, I'm tripping, you know. And so what it is, is that when they're traveling through hyperspace, she can see the place that they're going. It's like, OK, so you have visions that that's what it is. You just have visions. But no, it's it's in this. It's called force tripping. It's another retcon thing that they're trying to do. And it's it's stupid. Um, let's see. Another driving factor of the book is that Vanestra's vision, uh, visions she experiences in hyperspace. Uh, we know she used to have them in the past and now they've returned. Can you walk readers through how these visions, uh, work and what they're, what they ultimately mean in the context of out of the shadows? Okay. Uh, for Vanestra, when she was younger as a Padawan, she had these hyperspace visions. If you're like me, if I get on a train, I'm probably going to nod off in a train, in a car. I always feel a little sleepy. I actually get this way too. The second I'm in like motion, if I'm not driving the vehicle, I am knocked out. Uh, kind, uh, kind of get the weird uh, state of not quite sleepy, not quite awake. For Vanestra, when she hits uh, that... or. Uh, when she hits that when she's sleeping in hyperspace, she starts to have these visions. I wanted to play around with this idea that perhaps hyperspace is another aspect of the force. But, well, okay, what is the force? It's an energy source that binds the universe together. So, yes, hyperspace would already be part of the force. Uh, let's see. Uh, want to, uh, hyperspace is another aspect of the force, but I also didn't want it to be that uh, uh, didact. Uh, did I say that right? didact didactic didactic Blech, i can't speak today okay so basically what it is is that these being in hyperspace is what triggers her visions right so anakin when he's sleeping and he has like the nightmares like that that's always was it was for anakin as he goes to sleep and he has nightmares which is he has the force visions of his mother dying and then of padme dying which you know uh uh deduce it's not deduce, it's didact. It's didact, yeah. Here, I'll show you. It's like big. See, didact? Didact, see, that's the word. That's the word. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say that that's force tripping. Oh, yeah, and this is Vanestra. But look at the difference between the way that this one is drawn versus this chick. It's a, obviously a different artist, right? Uh, so, yeah, a little bit different. All right, so let's get back into this. Uh, oh, also, this is the character that's the bestest, bestest ever. Uh, didactic. Okay, so I did kind of say it right. I guess one of those times I might have said it right. But anyways, this is the chick that is the bestest, bestest ever. She was the youngest person ever to become a Jedi Knight. She is a prodigy, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so Mary Sue. Mary Sue from the beginning. Uh, everyone's always like, Burn is a prodigy, but what makes her special? What makes her different? What did a uh, Stellan see in her to have her elevated so early that maybe uh, we haven't seen yet? So for Vanestra, these hyperspace visions are something she doesn't necessarily feel comfortable with because it is so weird. Jedi have visions. Uh, El Bandito Huvas, things uh, didactic means intended to teach a lesson. I guess I could have Googled that. I don't know. I mean, it makes sense in context. I was just more, I was more concerned about the pronunciation. Uh, anyways, uh, Mary Sue personified. Exactly. They're all Mary Sue's. That's the problem with this. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, 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 when did Stellan uh, see in her to have her elevated so early that maybe we haven't seen yet? So for Vanestra, these hyperspace visions are something uh, she doesn't necessarily feel comfortable with because it is so weird. Uh, Jack Nero 99, thank you for the super chat. Uh, the force is a pathway to many trips, some of which are considered to be intoxicating. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, alcohol would be part of the force, right? Energy source that binds the galaxy together. Anyways. <clears throat> 
Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Jedi have visions. Jedi have a little bit of premonitions. Uh, they have feelings, instincts, and all these sorts of things. Imari has uh, this great kind of emotional radar or emotional sensitivity. And for Vanestra, she doesn't like uh, like her ability because it's not like that. Oh, my God. This is this woman's sentence. Because it's not like that straight and narrow Jedi way of life. You think any of them are? Like, come on. Uh, it kind of falls a little bit in this gray area. Yoda says, if you have visions of the future, don't look at them because it's the dark side. Uh, it's it's just the dark side. What? Who said that? What? This is not Master Yoda. See, she's Yoda says, if you have visions of the future, don't look at them because it's the dark side. It's just the dark side. When would Yoda ever fucking say that? Where Where was this written? Like, come on. Was this in the book? Seriously? If you have visions of the future, don't look at them because it's the dark side. It's just the dark side. When did Yoda ever fucking say that? Yeah, that's not what Yoda said. Uh, really? This is... Okay. This is a woman that writes for Star Wars. And the person that's interviewing her is a Star Wars lore expert. That's a new interpretation. Well, it's wrong. Like, come on. <sighs> My head hurts. I actually took Excedrin before this because I was kind of getting a mini headache because I was, like, mentally preparing myself for this. Um, yeah. This is what Star Wars has come to, everyone. Let's continue. This hurts. Uh, and so I wanted to play with this idea of like, what do visions mean to the Jedi and the Jedi Order? And I feel that uh, should be personal. Some Jedi have visions and are like, wow, now I know where I'm going. I know what I'm going to do. This is great. When? When did that happen? <sighs> this hurts my brain. I feel like a character like El Elzra is that how you that's not how you spell Ezra but it's Elzra uh when he has visions he's like let me dig into these this is amazing I'm going to live my life by these visions it's kind of like how some people are like I love astrology oh my god okay if I did a drinking game and I drank every time this woman said like, which I, now I'm catching myself doing it because I'm reading this, but I get it. It's like a transcription, right? Anyways. And others are like, it's all bullcrap. So I wanted to give Vanestra that learning curve because we've all had that thing that we used to do when we were younger, like baton twirling. Uh, no one but twirls with batons anymore. But when I was a kid, I was like really into baton twirling and I could throw it up and catch it behind my back and all that kind of stuff. And so every now and again, I'll see someone baton twirling in a marching band and think, wow, I should try that again. And it's like, why would I do that? I don't need to, but I wanted the hyperspace visions to have uh, that for Vanestra because I wanted to show how she's grown since she was a Padawan. That was literally like yesterday. She was a Padawan fucking yesterday, right? She, she's, what, 15, 16 years old? Uh, Mike Afar, uh, AF, uh, AFR, thank you for that. Uh, will you ever play games on PlayStation 5 on your channel? I don't own a PlayStation 5, so I don't think I can. So, I, I mean, you kind of need that thing to be able to play that thing. But so I have an Xbox One. Uh, and so, but that, that's inside. Uh, I kind of play, like, I'll use that, uh, when I'm playing games inside, which I don't really do. Uh, I, somebody sent me a capture card, but the capture card isn't compatible with OBS. And so I was, I was like, it's kind of a pain because then I would have to disconnect one of my monitors, hook it up to whatever gaming system, like an Xbox, and then do that with a capture card through OBS. And so it's a little bit difficult. I could probably figure it out if I had tutorials on how to watch it. But what I just do, honestly, is I have Steam. And so I I just bought games on Steam. And then I, I've... I, 
I have a Twitch that I'm going to play games on. I promise. I know I haven't streamed on the channel in a wee year. I was... I will play... I, I Honestly, I was talking about this with Sav. I was like, I will play on my Twitch channel tomorrow. Do you guys want to follow me on Twitch? Let me find it. I can link it for you guys. Uh, Here we go. Let's go. Twitch. There you go. I have all my things right there. So this is my Twitch channel. Yes, it is a picture of Henry Cavill waving. It's funny. Uh, I heard that Twitch is like they give priority to chicks. So I was like, I want to kind of fuck with them and see if, like if my profile picture is a dude. But it says that Star Wars girl in the name. I just want to see if anything will happen. Uh, so yeah, this is my Twitch channel. I am, I will play a game on it eventually. I, I, cause I finished playing KOTOR 2 and I know, I think Ryan was asking me if I was going to play KOTOR 1 again and I need some kind of patch or something or some kind of mod to be able to get the KOTOR 1 game to work on Steam with my controller. And so I don't know what that is or how to put that together. But ever somebody was so nice when I played Coach Arthur. They're like, Anna, you have to play with the Dark Lord or the, uh, the Dark Lord Sith Lord expansion pack or Sith Lord mod. And they sent me a link to it and they sent me a YouTube video on how to do it. And I did it and it was perfect and it was great. And so that's how I played KOTOR 2. But YouTube is like, fuck you when you do live streams. And so I have a live channel where I re-upload all of my live streams. So if you guys are not following me on that Star Wars Girl Live, that's where this stream will be re-uploaded to. But I have this channel. I'm going to play games on it eventually because I know one day YouTube will like kick the bucket on me and say, fuck you, get off our platform. So it's like, I kind of need to build myself up on different platforms and stuff. So this is my Twitch channel, if you guys want. This is Sab, my best friend. I'm, I host her, so she's up here too. Got Drunk 3PO, Yellow Flash, Gundam, Vic Mignogna, uh, Rakeda, and Mauler. Those are all the people that I host on my channel. So if one of them are playing, which I think is actually pretty cool. If you click on my channel and not playing, it'll show one of them if any of them are live. But so yeah, I will eventually play games on this. I said I was going to do it tomorrow. Maybe, maybe I'll do it tonight. I will. The, the games that I have on uh, Steam is I have Jedi Fallen Order, and then I have The Force Unleashed, one and two. I was thinking about playing The Force Unleashed next, but, because four, uh, what is it, the the other one, the one that I just said that I can't remember the name, the other one, the, the newer Star Wars one, Fallen Order. That one looks hard, so I was like, let me just play Force Unleashed first, you know? You know? I have those action figures, where is he? I just showed it. Uh, I have an Instagram and I decided to play a uh, action figure trivia and I took a picture of my action figure. And they're like, who is this? And I just put a bunch of names and obviously this is star killer. And I was like, who's this? And everyone's like, Oh, star killer. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. If you follow me on Instagram, I play, I do that from time to time. But, um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of my plan. Uh, this is a funny super chat. El, El Ban Bandido. Thank you for the super chat. Twitch stream fully clothed in a dry kitty bowl. No. No, I'm not doing that, but thank you. Thank you for the super chat. No kitty pool. I don't have any fucking space for that, and I don't want to buy a kitty pool. I'm too cheap for that. Uh, Diano, thank you for the super sticker, and it's a jumping jumping thing. Here's the thing. If I'm going to be playing games on here, guys, I need help. I am not good at playing video games, so I need people to be, what is it, backseat gaming? I need your guys' help, because... If you ever go back and watch my first playthrough of KOTOR, it was my phone on a tripod pointing at my TV. And I'm just like, what do I do? And you guys all laughed at me and I screamed and I was scared because the bad guy started shooting me after I was done. It took me like an hour to make my character. It was absolute hell. Again, I'm not good at video games, so I need help. So if I am going to do that, this is, this is where I'm going to do it and I need help. Uh, Macy Van Dusen, thank you for the super sticker. What does it say? Oh, it's a rose. Oh, thank you, Macy. Also, uh, Jessie, uh, I forgot to text her back because I was in the middle of streaming, but she passed on your message. Uh, I have this little guy right here. So, but thank you for your offer. This actually came all the way from England. So you guys want to know? Here's the thing. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a little story. I'll have a little intermission. Okay. So guys, where did baby Yoda come from? Well, when a mommy Yoda and a daddy Yoda love each other very much, they have a baby Yoda. See? It's a baby Yoda, and it's a mommy Yoda, and it's a daddy Yoda, and then it's a baby Yoda. How cute. And it's almost as if Yaddle was in the Jedi Temple 
the same time Yoda was. And oh my God, how old is baby Yoda? Oh my God, he's about 50? Same age as Anakin? Oh my God! Oh my God! It's like that's where baby Yoda came from. Mind blown, right? It's like, oh my God, there just happened to be a male and a female of the two most rarest species in Star Wars. And they're at the same place at the same time. And there's a baby? I wonder where that baby came from. Like, really? Come on. We all know. We all know. Yoda was tapping that. Yoda was getting it. Yeah, I keep them right here on my desk. Just for that. I also have Gandalf. You guys want to see? I got Gandalf on my desk, too. <laughs> this is from the uh, Burger King, when Burger King actually used to make good toys. I have, like, Gladriel. She's up there. I don't want to reach for her. I'm just surrounded by toys. You guys want to see something cool? So I had been looking for this for years, and then I found it at Star Wars Celebration. It was freaking awesome. I use it to keep my pin, uh, my Wacom uh, pin. You guys want to see? So it's Luke from Empire, and he's in the, the tank, the band, the back to tank. And then I have uh, this this little thing was right here because I don't have all of it, and I just put my my pin for my Wacom tablet in it. It's cool. I have it right next to my speaker. Uh, let's see. Anyways, yeah. That's just something fun to show you guys. Uh, Rattle Shrek, the, Mr. the Gravity Machine is from Rebels. Is it? Am I blanking on it? I haven't watched Rebels in forever. I haven't watched Rebels in forever. But yeah, if you guys want to see me play video games, if you guys want to help me play video games, if you really, really want to, uh, I'll stream on this, I guess, tonight, which I'm going to regret later. But I can. I can do it. Um... Anyways, yeah. So go follow me on Twitch if you guys want to see me gaming. I'm almost up to 2,000 followers. That's actually pretty cool considering I haven't streamed on here in like a year. So I apologize to everyone for that. But uh, yeah. 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 It's because I was trying to finish KOTOR on this channel and I did. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jack Nero 99 thing was super dead. Just play Dark Souls. It's the best training for Fallen Order. Oh, God. I've, is that the one where they all just come and kill you? They all just raid you and kill you. I'm like, ah! I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I just need help. If you guys want me to play video games, there have to be people to help me because I am not good. Uh, let's see. Uh, El Bandido. Thank you. Yes, Yoda got it. Uh, but that's not where baby Yoda came from. Baby Yoda came from a desperate need to increase sales revenue. Well, hey, it was smart. It was smart. They did do that. But no, this is it's Yoda. I feel like I should play like the sexy time music. And I was like, you know, the let's get it on music. And then it's like him and Yaddle. And then all of this sudden, Yoda. Look, he's, like, he's even the right size. He's a little baby Yoda with his mommy and his daddy. It's just so cute. I, I really wanted to just to make a stop motion video where it's like, where did baby Yoda came from? It's like baby Yoda explain origin story explained. And it's a little stop motion. And it's like when a mom, and it's like a little stop motion of like when a mommy Yoda and daddy Yoda love each other very much and then it's like the did you guys ever watch that condom commercial with the balloon animals and it's like the squeaking and then it's like then there's a baby Yoda maybe one day I'll do it I think that would be funny that I feel like that would be my video that would break a, a billion or not a billion a million views I think that one could do it I think that one if I could figure out how to edit a little bit better my, I think that my comedic side might be able to make its way through, right? Yes. Actually, Grogu was a clone from Yoda. No! Stop it! This is perfect! It makes more sense! It's a baby! Stop messing with my theory. My theory is much more funnier. <laughs> uh, Patrick, do you think we should do that? Costco has giant Grogu plushie for sale. I can send you the link. I was actually just at Costco and I saw it and I did not buy it because I'm like, I'm already getting buried and stuff. I have no room for anything. But uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is the wrong way. I was. I need to look up here. I think I saw another one. Um, Young uh, Canuck. Thank you, Mr. Uh, KOTOR is the game that convinced me that video games are works of art. The Rev and Reveal blew my mind as a kid. Yeah, everyone got to watch me and experience that with me in real time. It did not get spoiled for me. And it was absolutely amazing. And that was so cool because I was like, what? My character! Ah! Anyways, it was fucking awesome. And I actually, I was surprised that I enjoyed KOTOR 2 even more. KOTOR 2 was fantastic. 
All right, here we go. Let's get back to this. I'm sorry. I apologize for everyone in advance. Okay. Okay. Uh, Vanessa, because I wanted to show she's grown since she was a Padawan. She used to have these visions that used to be a big deal for Stellan. And he would be like, yeah, you should try to work on them as a strength. Oh, so he, so this dude's actually a good teacher. Wow. And Vanessa's like, I don't want to do that. Oh my, what? What? Oh my God. Ah, uh, <laughs> Mary fucking Sue. Mary fucking Sue. Uh, he said you should work on that and strengthen them. No, I don't want to do that. That sounds like somebody that they should make a Jedi Knight early, right? Not a Padawan. Oh, my God. Um, now, here she is, and they're unavoidable. So, for her, she believes in the Force and that she's guided by the Force and in a way that a lot of Jedi maybe aren't. Like, she's just really, really into the Force. She's like, if the Force was a K-pop band, I'd be all... Oh, my... What? Oh, my God. Did I just read that? What? Holy shit! This is terrible! Oh my god. If the Force was a K-pop band, I'd be all about it. Laughs. This is a star- This is the prodigy Star Wars character that was the first pat- The youngest Padawan to ever be made Jedi Knight. Straight up tells her master- no, I don't want to strengthen my force abilities. And the I'm really into the force like it's a K-pop band. I need that like clip that Cecil always plays where the dude like just walks out the window. Sweet Jesus. This is real. <laughs> This is somebody that's writing for Star Wars, describing their characters in Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Lisa. This is embarrassing so bad. It's like a child wrote this. I'm gonna, how old is this lady? Let me see, how old is... I get it that this is a young adult novel, but really, let me see, how old is she? Uh... It doesn't say. But, um, oh, listen to this. She is currently pursuing her PhD in English literature. Yeah, I, th I don't know if it, this woman should be allowed to be called a doctor in literature when this is literally how she's describing. This is terrible. Mentally eight. Yeah, Dr. Coffinales, you're about spot on with that. Yeah, we're talking about Star Wars. Yeah, listen to this. If the Force was a K-pop band, I'd be all about it. At least it's not a rock. You know, I feel like at this point, the rock was a little bit more creative. I feel like on a, at this point, you could really stretch it to say that the rock is kind of a ripoff of what, what is it? The, is it crying angels or fallen angels? I'm not, I'm not really a Doctor Who person. Sav, if Sav's in the chat, she'll know. The, the angels that are like this, and every time you like look away, they move closer to you. I feel, I feel like the rock, they could basically say, oh, we're ripping off that, but it's literally just going to be a rock. But this is like, no. It's a, the Jedi pair, the Jedi Knight that's a prodigy tells her master, no, I, weeping angels, thank you. Uh, no, I don't want to do this thing. I have a gift in the Force, and I don't want to strengthen it. Oh, and now I'm all about the Force. The, the Force is so cool. It is like, uh, it's like, it's a K-pop band. I'm so all about it. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. Sweet Jesus. This hurts my head. All right. We have to continue. See, I, my Advil, or not my Advil, my Excedrin was not strong enough for this. Macy Anderson, thank you for the super chat. We, Geode will be the cornerstone of the next movie. <laughs> I see what you did. That was funny. Um, okay, here. So I want to show what it's like when a Jedi is a little out of their comfort zone. A Jedi is a little out of their comfort zone. Okay. So like every Star Wars movie. Do you think Luke, do you think Luke Skywalker was in his zone like, in his comfort zone when he went to the Death Star 
knowing that he is going possibly going to die you think that he was in his comfort zone facing off darth vader and the emperor no do you think anakin was in his comfort zone when he went to the jedi temple to murder all the children no do you think any of them are ever in their comfort zone when they're gonna go fight and like do battle? No! Do you think Yoda was in his comfort zone when he had to fight Count Dooku? No! Give me a fucking break. God, this hurts my head. I need to Cedrin. Uh, okay. But also, the visions push her in a direction she normally wouldn't take. And I think that's important for someone who's already good at something, who knows the rights and wrongs, and were to tread the needle. It's really important for them to be outside of their comfort zone. zone their comfort zone because that's when we grow. Oh my god. Uh, Shane Kina, thank you for that. Can't we just get back to, you know, the light side and the dark side, the Jedi and the Sith, and stop convoluting literally everything? You would think. I didn't think that that was going to be such a hard thing to ask for. I didn't think that that would be so difficult. But uh, apparently, that is like asking for the biggest fucking diamond in the world, right? It's like, that that's a, an impossible request. Uh, El Bandito, thank you for the super chat. Uh, what style do you think Yoda favors during sexy time? Does he still have the flips and spins or does he slow it down? Does he use the force? This is Russell Hall. I finally figured it out. That took me a while. It's because I wasn't really looking at the picture. Russell Hall, that was a good one. I think that's the longest it's ever taken me to guess uh, your, your, you know, your alter ego this day. Um, I don't know. You guys can do a poll. Do you guys think Yoda is all romantic whining and dining? Or do you think he's like, let me show you the moves and jumping off the wall? I think that would be more funny. Like if the Yodas are just like crazy and like, that would be funny. Uh, Christopher Prophet, thank you for the super chat. Good thing I got you the VHS of the original Star Wars. Oh, well, thank you for that. I That's actually how I watch Star Wars. I have them all in VHS. And so it, it's all like the unedited version. So I have like before even they uh, fixed uh, Darth Sidious, like the Emperor, before they changed it out. I watch it with like the OG, OG makeup. And so, like, last time, uh, well, when Jesse was at my mom's house, we were watching a Return of the Jedi. And <laughs> she's like, oh, my gosh, I haven't watched this version in a while. I was like, yeah, this is how I always watch it. Um, but thank you for that. Uh, that's very kind of you. Uh, pound down and go. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> that's funny, though. Uh, let's see. And uh, where was I at? Because we have to keep reading. Guys, we're not even halfway through this. Just FYI to everyone out there. FYI to everyone out there, unfortunately. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, so I wanted to show what it's like when a Jedi is a little out of their comfort zone, but also the visions push her in a direction she normally wouldn't take. And I think that's important for someone who's already good at something, who knows the rights and wrongs. Did I already read this uh, comfort zone? Because that's when we grow. When we get out of our comfort zone, that's when we start to grow and change. And for Vanestra, these hyperspace visions really kind of force her to think. Maybe this isn't a bad thing. Maybe this wasn't a bad thing ever. Maybe it's just a thing I need to understand a little bit more and use when I think it's appropriate. Oh my god, it's almost as if she shouldn't have been promoted to Jedi Knight and she should have remained a Padawan because she should have listened to her fucking master uh, who was trying to tell her these things. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's like mind blowing. Oh well. Oh well. All right, here we go. Next question. Let's see if it can get any fucking worse, guys. Any fucking worse. Also, please smash the like button if you haven't already. Please and thank you. And if you haven't, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and ring those bell for notifications. Uh, StarWars.com. Something you were kind of getting at was in relation uh, at the end, or was in relation to in the end of the novel. Uh, Mari Stan Tekka. Uh, provides Vern with a location that Vern decides to keep to herself. She doesn't share it with the Jedi Council in her briefing, and I'm kind of wondering, a couple of Jedi express throughout the book that Vern is young. Do you think that played into why she didn't tell the Council about this location she was given? Well, no fucking shit. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that a lot 
of it is sometimes you have a gut feeling like, I don't know, I'm just going to sit on this until I know what it means. I think for Vernestra, she's about a year or so into her knighthood. I think she realizes that being a Jedi Knight is not the end. It was the goal. She achieved it, but it's not the end. It's only the beginning. I think especially when she had those interactions with Stellan, she doesn't tell him about her light whip either. That's weird. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shane Keen, I think you should have, just watch the deleted scenes from one through six. Some of them should have been included. If I had created rights, I'd polish them up and plug and play. Yeah, there's some deleted scenes that I liked in there. Uh, thank you for the super chat, by the way. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stellan, uh, uh, light whip either and I think for her it's more about Stellan was her master and he taught her how to be a Jedi but now she's learning there are other ways to be a Jedi and she's worried that maybe she's going to disappoint him but she's also trying to figure out her own place in the order she has that conversation with Comac uh, where he's like no one's done you any favors by making you a knight this young like do you understand how hard it is to be a Jedi and she's like well yeah of course and he's like, no, but you're going to learn and you're going to learn that, uh, learn that with your Padawan. And so for Vanestra, I think it's a moment when she's like, yeah, I made it and I'm here. And what the hell do I do now? And I think uh, for her, it's about how to be a Jedi she wants to be while serving the Force and the Order because the Force and Order are not necessarily the same thing. The Order is made up of flawed individuals and the Force is the Force and it doesn't care laughs. Oh my god, this lady is insufferable. Pastor Flash, thank you for the super chat, dude. Uh, do you think we could get a... Uh, uh, boxes and the pipe man on the jack show to read one of his stories oh oh god <laughs> um the one he read on evap 150 was great so i don't know if you've ever uh i i remember i was on one of the evaps one of their the first 24 hour ones that they did and oh my god the, the it was a 45 minute gay unicorn sex story and it was traumatizing so got nothing against the guy that that kind of stuff it um it's not really for me he is funny he is very very funny i think i'm still traumatized by the gay unicorn sex story that was uh extremely descriptive and went on for 45 minutes yeah i'm still a little traumatized uh wait was if that 150 already good oh yeah it was i missed it i missed it i did i did i i missed it caller asked me to go on and i was like yeah to be fair he never sent me a link though but that's fine it's completely fine uh macy van do something with you good night anna stay strong uh in the force and live long and prosper well thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for the super chat and thank you everyone uh let's see now let's get back to this <clears throat> here we go and she's like, oh, no, I wrote that one. Um, and I think for her, it's about how to be a Jedi she wants to be while serving the Force and the Order. Because the Force and the Order are not necessarily the same thing. The Order is made up of flawed individuals, and Force is the Force, and it doesn't care. Laughs. So for Dina for Vanestra, she's like, I really like the Force, and I want to serve the Force well. But does that always mean going along with the order, uh, with what the order tells me? And I think that's her arc in Out of the Shadows. And I think that's where we're going to see her continue to go and continue to question the things uh, to have any kind of reconcile with who she wants to be as a Jedi in light of the Force and the, for and, and the order. Oh, my God. Um <laughs> This hurts. This hurts my head. All this tells me is that this chick, based on the way that Justina Ireland is talking about her and um, whatchamacallit, the way she's talking about her and describing her and going on about arcs and stuff, I, I don't know how much of this character was written by other authors, but just by the way that Justina is talking about her, she didn't know anything about what it is to be a Jedi Knight or Star Wars, and so writing this, it just blows my mind. Um, let's see. Let's continue. StarWars.com. Shifting characters. Uh, Zeeland Graf. 
might be the most annoying person I've ever read. Laughs. He irritated me so much in a good way. You wrote him so well. How is writing that character who's so steeped in arrogance? Oh, yay. Is this one of these characters? Is that one of these ones? Let's see. No. No. Let's see. All right. I don't know who this character is. Let's look him up. Let's look him up. Let's see if they have anything else on him. Mm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, mm. Is this not him? Okay. Let's see. I already Googled this chick. Let's Google him. Um, I guess we don't have any images of him, so stay tuned. Okay, Justina Island, have you ever met somebody that's never hard to worry about money? Or that's never had to worry about, really, that's, that's the thing about this character. Have you ever met someone that's never had to worry about money? They're not like regular people laughs. I know a lot of people who think, uh, Shit's Crete is really funny, but that's real. Laughs. I've never met anybody that rich, but I've met people who have grown up with money and continue to have money. Uh, the kind of people who are like, well, why wouldn't you just go to Harvard? Why would you want to go to a state school? And you're like, who just goes to Harvard? That's not how it works. Laughs. And so I wanted to show uh, that there are people in the galaxy who are so completely untouched by reality, or at least the reality for most of the other characters that you're like, what are you doing? And Zeeland's like, oh, this is my tower. Why would I listen to somebody? Why would I follow rules? Rules don't apply to me. I have money. So, I mean, not flaunting it, but you're kind of talking about Palpatine. <laughs> I mean, Palpatine, he doesn't have to worry about money. He's always been wealthy. Uh, Padme's always been wealthy too, but Padme has that like humanitarian side of her. But come, like this is your villain, uh, Joseph the Gamer. Fifteen, thank you, Super Dad. Why does Disney keep hiring people who don't care about Star Wars and also love watching you, Anna? Oh well, thank you. Uh, it's for a diversity checklist because there, it's not, it has nothing to do with uh, talent, obviously. But thank you for the super chat. I'm glad uh, you like this. But yeah, it's like um. Don't you realize that if you go and, okay, go watch Attack of the Clones, look at the difference between the people that are on the bar, in the bar and, you know, on the, on the ground of uh, Coruscant as compared to, you know, Padme is living in like a penthouse, right? Look at the difference between, and heck, look at the difference between how Padme lived and where she lived versus where Anakin lived right? Heck, you have people that all they do is flex, you know, their abilities and their money, which is job of the hut, right? Crazy. Mm. This hurts my head. This hurts my head so much. Anyways, uh, I thought it was a lot of fun to write that character because we always don't get to see the rich and annoying person in Star Wars. Yes, you did. Uh, Russell Hall, thank you for the super chat. Nothing says Star Wars like a Harvard reference. I know. I know. I know. Ah. This is so frustrating. StarWars.com, totally. And it's nice to see him in comparison to Sly, who's the compete complete opposite spectrum of Sly, and her just being like, what? Oh my god, you mean like Anakin and Padme? You mean like Luke and Leia? Oh my, you mean like Han and Leia? Like Han, like, you know, giving her shit for being a princess? Anna, this article sounds like eye cancer. Yeah, this article is just hell. It's absolute hell. Uh, don't you remember like Han worrying the entire time about money and Han needing to get go pay Jabba the Hutt? for the bounty on his head and Leia giving him shit for only focusing on money. It's almost like that this has been done in Star Wars and actually done good. Crazy. Okay, here we go. Let's read the next one. Uh, ha 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 ha. She's like, what is happening here? I just want something to eat and you bring me to this, uh, 
these tiny plates of little nothings. Also, that scene is totally based on a time that I went to a gastro pub with some friends who were like, we should try these. And it was like one of the most expensive meals I've ever had and was still hungry when I left. I was like, there was no food. We paid for food and it never showed up. Ha 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 ha. So yeah, everyone was saying that this is a self-insert. It 100% is. That, that That's exactly... She's literally describing herself. This is 100% a self-insert character. Justina Ireland created this character so she could have a character as her own little mini ego in the Star Wars universe complaining about food. It's like, out of all of the things in Star Wars, this is what you want to talk about. So obviously the Nile aren't that bad. Obviously these problems in Star Wars aren't that bad. All of these villains, because you're concerned about how much food you eat on a plate from a rich person. Also, why do you think, in the nicest way possible, some of these rich people don't, uh, they're not as... Um, you know, morbidly obese as a majority of America is because maybe they eat finer stuff that have, that are a little bit richer and so you can't eat as much. And so, I mean, anyways, whatever, whatever, self-insert all the way. Okay. Uh, s continuing with characters. Was there a character that you were most excited to write? And in contrast to that, which character was most difficult to write? Justina Ireland. I'm always excited to write any character, honestly. I'm always excited to write Star Wars. But it's also the hardest thing ever because you don't want to screw it up. Full stop. If it's something you love, you don't want it to be put on a crappy character. Or it's you don't want to put out a crappy character. Well, yeah, I don't think any unless you're a shitty. Well, unless you're Ryan Johnson, you really don't want to put out a crappy character. Ryan Johnson's like, no, let's make them all shit. Uh, I was also really excited to write something on Coruscant. I don't think we've seen a lot of Coruscant yet in the High Republic. I was someone who saw the prequel trilogy in theaters as a grown person. When I saw Coruscant, I was like, what's this place? I'm so used, uh, I'm used to like Tatooine and Dagobah and Hoth and all of a sudden it's like Coruscant, seeing it was so much different than reading about it or how you imagined it in your brain and when I was writing this book I wanted to populate Coruscant with people who had different, uh, differing opinions and had all kinds of different experiences but I don't think I was excited about anything other than writing the book. Wait, okay, so let me get this straight. I wanted to populate Coruscant with people who had different opinions and all kinds of different experiences. Oh, so you mean like, like the Senate, all of these different aliens from different planets with different opinions on how the galaxy should be run? Oh my god, it's like we've never seen that before in Star Wars. Oh my god! It's like all of those scenes, everyone complains about... The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones and heck, even uh, Revenge of the Sith. How uh, the Senate stuff is so boring. It's almost like it has all of these different types of aliens, all from different backgrounds, planets, societies, and all with different ideas on how the galaxy should be run. And there's that whole scene where Anakin is trying to seduce Padme and he's like, we should just, somebody should just make them do what we want them to do. And she's like, that's a dictatorship. And she's like laughing. It's the meme thing. It's like, oh my God, crazy how everything that this chick wants has already been done before. Um, night, night King zero one. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, remember what happened to flawed characters like Anakin? They, uh, their weaknesses were exploited. Jedi Knights removed human connections because of this. Dun, 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 dun. Well, they already had that removed before. Remember? Thank you for the super chat. Uh, let's see. The Phantom Menace didn't bother me. I know. It didn't bother me. It bothered a lot of people, though. Oh, this is exhausting. Uh, we're almost... Are we almost done? Are we almost done? How much... Oh, God, we're not. Oh, my God. We're not almost done, guys. We're not almost done. You gotta be fucking shitting me. Okay, I gotta read. I gotta read more. Okay. Uh, continue with characters. Was there a character that you were most excited to write? And in contrast, which character were, you mo were the most difficult to write? I'm always excited to write Star. Oh, I think I read that. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so we're down here. Yes, I got through a little bit. Uh, the hardest character to write was actually Mari San Tekka because she doesn't really get a lot of lines, laughs. The Niles, like, live in the pod and give us the paths. And she's like, okay, 
but it's like she got to be somebody who was who was she how did she end up here she's been tortured uh, for these pests by uh marchino Ro- uh is it matt macchio Ro- i'm just gonna call uh Makino Row. Uh, but why would she go along with it? Uh, why has she been with the Nile for so long? And trying to see the backstory was really important because it kind of gives us an idea of just how terrible the Nile really are. Like someone in uh Marchino Road's family kidnapped a young child and kept them in active in captivity until they were an old woman. That's pretty messed up. Well, no fucking shit, it's a bad guy. And so I think it was really important to do her story arc justice because we don't necessarily dig into bad things or hard conversations in Star Wars because we're more about talking about good things and having fun. Okay, they don't talk. It's almost as if Star Wars. What what happens? Did, did you watch it? Do you know what happens in the very first Star Wars movie? That's the, the, the first thing you see. You see C-3PO and R2-D2 and their ship is under attack. Their ship is being fired on. By who? Oh yeah, Darth Vader. What does Darth Vader do? He goes in the room and kills everyone. He holds the guy up and fucking strangles him. They're looking for Princess Leia. They fucking shoot Princess Leia and stun her. And he's like, you know, we're going to fucking torture them. We're going to kill everyone. Right? It's a very high, high tension scene in the very fucking beginning of the movie and it sets the tone for the universe that we're in that shit's going on right so we only want to talk about the good stuff in star wars we're not going to focus on the bad stuff it's like oh my god you didn't watch star wars did you you didn't watch star wars did you anyways uh but it's also important to respect what those stories have set up. And I think for her, I hope at some point we do storytelling where we get uh, some of her point of view. Because the things that she can do are amazing, but she gets no voice. And she has no agency. And that's upsetting and unfortunate. So that was really the hardest character for me. I was just like, I want to give her a happy ending. And sometimes just dying is the happiest ending you can give a character. Oh, did she kill the character? All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Shifting. I like how she didn't answer which one was her favorite to write. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, shifting a little bit, there's a bit of romance in the air of Out of the Shadows. Wraith, in particular, is going through it. He had a crush on Nan, who turned out to be a Nile. And now I think I'm detecting a bit of a crush on Vanestra. Can you talk about that? Uh, let's see. Uh, poor Wraith. He's like, I like people and I want them to like me. And I wish that they weren't all either Jedi or terrible laughs. Uh, Young Connect, thank you for the super chat. Don't talk about difficult things. You mean like how the Republic fell because it was over bloated, corrupt bureaucrat, uh, bureaucracy crumbling under the weight of its own red tape? I know the, 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 the things that they don't talk about. Can't talk about the bad stuff in Star Wars, even though that's literally the plot. That's how the plot revolves around the bad stuff, or else we wouldn't have the freaking plot. But anyways, it's really frustrating. Um, Here we go. Uh, I think it's one of the important things about the Jedi in this time period. They expect Padawans to have crushes. They expect them to have little romances, and it's fine. We're not uh, to the Jedi yet who are like, no attachments, don't look at anybody. It's really about serving the force and being the best Jedi that you can. And I think sometimes that means we all want to have emotional connections. And even people who are uh, a roman- uh, aromantic still want to have an emotional connection with other people. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. But for Wreath, uh, he's really wants to have a romance. He's like, I just want to meet a nice girl and maybe have coffee and talk uh, cool stuff. Lovely. Uh, also, guys, also remember, they uh, put sex in Star Wars. Now they're having conversations about sex uh, in a young adults or like what? No, don't they always say it's for kids? It's a kid's book, right? But they're going to have conversations about kids having sex. Lovely. Okay, here we go. Uh, but for Wraith, he, uh, just, I wouldn't mean, uh, he just wants to have like a good hangout. But yeah, I feel like he's very authentic. Uh, it's a very authentic thing. Even when you're in a work situation, sometimes you have those soft feelings for another person, even if they're not appropriate feelings, you still have them and you just have to deal with them. And it was really fun to write Wraith like 
hey, Vernestra. And she's like, hey, laughs. She's like, you're such a great friend. And he's like, oh. And Imari shaking his head. No, bro, it's not going so well. Laughs. This is what Star Wars come from. This is what Star Wars has come to, guys. Anyways, um, Shane Keenan, thank you for the super chat. Have you ever considered doing some programming around the Harry Potter universe? If you haven't, that should be a uh, considered, uh, 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 that should be considered to widen your audience. Um, well, there's nothing really much for me to talk about with Harry Potter because the shows, I mean, the movies are over and I don't like the Fantastic Beast movies. I guess I could have done a, a video about when I saw the second one, but, um, I, I don't know, maybe when the third one comes out. I don't, I'm not going to pay to watch it if it, if I magically see it somewhere, you know, maybe at a friend's house and they, um, yo ho, yo ho, pirates like me. Um, you know, we got, I, I don't know. I really don't want to support anything there because of what they did to Johnny Depp. And so I think that's really fucked up. But again, if it's yo ho, yo ho, uh, if I'm at my friend, uh, I don't know if I'm at my friend, uh, my, if I'm at my friend's house and they happen to have it, maybe I'll watch it and maybe I'll review it, you know, you know, uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, I'm a Gryffindor that makes uh, any, I've done streams where I was at Harry Potter land. And so there you go. Uh, yeah. I mean, I like Harry Potter. It's been a while. I, I feel like I need to read the books again. It's been a while since I read them. Yeah, I remember all your friend Patchy the Pirate. That was a good one. I was trying to think of a, a name that wasn't Captain Jack Sparrow. Uh, <laughs> trying to think of something. But uh, yeah, I'll go over to my friend Patchy the Pirate's house and we'll, we'll watch it. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm going to steal this. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott, for that. But yeah, I guess I could make us some Harry Potter content. I like Harry Potter a lot. I remember all of it coming out. I remember waiting in line at Borders. I was actually in Boise, Idaho when the Deathly Hollows book came out. And my cousin and like me and my sisters, we all waited in line. And I remember it's like some lady came out. She's like, look, I have it. There's hope. And everyone cheered because she was the first chick that got the book from Borders. Now Borders is closed. But yeah, I was at the mall in Boise. Uh, Russell, thank you for the super chat. Speaking of Harry Potter, uh, Star Wars and Yoda sexy time. How long do you think before they make Yoda gay? I'm actually surprised they haven't already, to be completely honest with you, the way that they do things. Uh, okay, um, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, I didn't read this question. Okay. Um, ah, that's I'm getting hiccups. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we, t uh, we can't talk about romance without talking about Silvestri and Jordana. Oh my gosh. Uh, we learned that the two had a relationship. Oh, so Silv- Oh my God. It's literally a stereotype. She's black and she's gay. You gotta be gay. This is, this is exactly what, uh, your boy Zach says on, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, diversity in comics. Well, he changed his name, like something in comics with your boy Zach. Uh, yeah. All they do is they make them black and they make them gay. Unless Jordana is a boy, which I highly doubt it. Uh, let's see. Um, relationship on, uh, is this supposed to be Takei, like George Takei? Uh, and ended when Sly left and Jordana denied, uh, leaving with her when Sly asked and was keeping Jordana on to Kay and how do you think the story would have played out differently if Jordana had originality or originally joined Sly <laughs> oh my god uh Justine Ireland Jordana stayed on to Kay because she's a uh Sean uh Taika deputy uh which is sort of like if you go and settle in a place and if you stay for a certain amount of time, you'll get a you'll get a land grant and uh, stand takes are uh, needed people to help grow food buildings. Uh, if you need people to maintain infrastructure and you can't do it by yourself. So Jordana's job is to be a San Teke deputy and she needs to stay on Teke because her job is there and that is what she is doing. That is her life. Oh my. Okay. So I want to look this up. Let's, let's look up Jordana. I want to see this character.
Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, is she on here? Is she one of these characters? Uh, okay, let's go, just go Google it. Are we going to get a picture of this character or do they not have this character yet? Paste. Um, I guess we don't have an image of this character. Oh, is this, this is a chart? Is this a chart of them? Oh my goodness. Let's see. Oh, that's not blurry at all. Well, we don't know what she looks like yet. But I feel like we'll find out soon. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, wait. So Jenna, Jenna, uh, because, uh, but for Sly, she's like, but we could go and see the galaxy. Uh, that would be cool. There's a lot of other stuff we can do instead of staying in this dusty planet. And I think of Jordana had left with Sly. We never would have had this story. We never would have had a Chansey going to make the gravity's heart. We never would have Sly coming up against the Nile. It would have been a completely different story because Sly and Jordana probably would have gotten a ship much earlier or would have brought uh, the switch back from Chansey and gone off on their own and become haulers or something and obviously sly would have never had her lapse in judgment in working with zaylin graf and uh she if she had jordan in there to be like look how rich these people are because i'm a rich person and he's a piece of crap laughs i think that if jordana had been there she would have kept sly sane because sometimes for me uh, I've been married a really long time, and the thing I get most out of my relationship is my husband's the person who does the sanity check with me. Uh, I'm like, we should do this, and he's like, wait, hold up. Here's eight reasons why that's a bad idea. It laughs. Oh, my God. Her husband, I, I mean, he's doing society a favor, but he really needs to step up his game. Uh, so I think we really need those people. It doesn't always have to be a relationship, but we need these people who are going to push us forward in life when uh, we don't have the confidence to do things or hold us back when we're running in the wrong direction. Uh, those are my best friendships and my best relationships. If Sly had Jordana, she would have uh, had a much straighter path to happiness. Okay. And it needs to pop another Tylenol. I know. I know. I just think it's so funny that this character is <laughs> its literally the checklist that they go through. They make a character black and you make them gay. That that's, that's all they know how to do. Okay. Uh, let's see the next one. Uh, the book concludes with the revelation that Lorna D is a... Uh, amusing a plan to overthrow uh, the overthrow Eye of the Nile, Marchino Rowe. Uh, has everything gone according to her plan so far or what we see in the novel? Uh, Russell, thank you for that. Her husband is clearly a giant pussy. <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Uh, that's actually a very clever way to put that, but that's funny. Okay, here we go. Let's continue. Uh, I think so. I think Lorna's plans are always flexing and changing uh, and refining and kind of taking the next step. I think she also, uh, she's also adaptable. She's a sleeper agent you never see coming. She's the person who slides a knife into your back and you're like, what? I thought we were friends. So they're frenemies. Uh, and she's like, no, you were in my way. Laps. Okay, so she's like any bad guy. Uh, and I think it's pretty much going as planned, which is why if you're really into Lorna D, you have to pick up the Tempest Runner because I think what Cab is doing with her character and storytelling and direction that goes, you get so much more out of that. Lorna D is making moves and Mashino uh, better watch out. Oh, so it's a lady killing the bad guy. Of course it is. <clears throat> All right. Uh, final question. Oh my God, we're almost done. A uh, final question to wrap this up. What was your favorite scene to write out of the shadows? Uh, probably at the end when Jordana takes out like 20 Nile and Vanessa's like, wait, what? Hold on. What's happening? Oh my gosh. Jordana shows up and takes out the Nile. Mary Sue. Uh, wait, what's happening? 
Uh, we don't do that. And Jordana's like, a dead Nile's the only good Nile because I think it's too easy to get into uh, the John Wick, more bloodshed is good mindset. And there aren't other people in the world who are like, no, let's try to find other ways to solve our problems because the Jedi would never. Uh, they do have the ability to go in and just level everybody, uh, but uh, then they'd be Sith laughs. Okay, so she just, like, did that whole paragraph how her jo how Jordana would have been, like, the, um, like, kind of like the conscience for, uh, Sly, and now she's just, like, a cold-blooded John Wick killer, really? That's kind of condescending. Uh, let's see. Anyways. Or, it's just not condescending. That wasn't the word I was looking for. That's kind of hypocritical. That was the word I was looking for. Sorry. Mind fart. I've just, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I just... My Excedrin, some, for whatever reason, decided to wear off early or got burned off early. And I just have, like, a pounding headache. You guys can't guess why. Uh, here we go. Uh, that scene went through so many changes. And then finally, last time through, I was like... Oh, that's what the scene is about. Part of the writing in the scene is understanding not just what the scene is about, but what each character in the scene wants. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, she totally read uh, Save the Cat because she's using terminology and examples from that book. Uh, for those of you that don't know what Save the Cat is, it's, uh, is that what it's called? Is it so called Save the Cat or is it called something? It's something with a stupid cat, but... I remember they were talking about it on EFAP so much because everyone references it. So I got it and I read it and like literally what she's talking about is thing is examples that they use in it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Malin, EVS, Frogman, and CG Crew is getting hammered, by the way. I know they didn't invite me onto the stream. So I, but I was already doing my own stream. I hope those guys are having fun. I made them all get hammered on my stream with Dale Keown, which you guys haven't checked out. Dale had a lot of fun. And uh, I re-uploaded that onto my secondary channel at Star Wars Girl Live, which is where I re-upload all of my live streams. Somebody was like, you edited it. I was like, no, I didn't. You really think I'm going to sit there and edit a five-hour live stream? Fuck no. Uh, I I always, you know, re-upload it onto the other. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I read something in the chat and it totally made me lose focus. But uh, pet the dog, save the cat. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, anyways, let's get back to this. Um, and I was like, yeah, that would make sense. Jordan has been a uh, uh, getting her butt handed to her mostly by the Nile. And Vanestra is like, I'm going to make good in the galaxy. And so you see, uh, this is where it could go or lead. If people go unchecked, you will have people who just go in and wipe everybody out. But the Jedi are really there and uh, to be a calming force. They're there to be like, no, we're going to put the blasters down and everybody is going to go to their respective corners and we're going going to figure this out. And I think that's really important, uh, a really important job that the Jedi do this in storytelling and the galaxy as a whole is to be a calming force that doesn't lead bloodshed to more bloodshed to more bloodshed. All right. I was holding you for the super chat. No more Shane without Cecil to keep him in line. <laughs> I think it was funny. We didn't get through any stories though. Uh, Paul Perez, the happy geek. Thank you for the super chat. What the fuck are you reading? It's not science fiction. It's a freaky daytime soap opera. Like stands through an hour, stands through an hourglass are so uh, the days of our lives. What a piece of shit storyline. I know it's terrible. I don't know why this got approved. I don't know how this shit gets approved, but it does. And it blows my mind. Oh my God. It blows my mind. But uh, thank you for the super chat guys. I appreciate it. But so I think that was the end of that. So I think what I'm going to do is I will do a video kind of summarizing all of this now that you guys all got to watch me uh, read it live. I have a splitting headache. Um, I was I was going to do this. I was going to read this, which is six Star Wars comics uh, reveals that enhance the original trilogy. But I've been going for almost two hours, and I do think I actually kept up with all of the super chats. So... Would you guys like me to do another stream tomorrow and do all of this in its own separate stream tomorrow, like during the day and uh, just call it a night, make a video on this, have that come out tomorrow morning and uh, we can all, uh, we can do another stream tomorrow. You guys want to do that? Or do you guys want me to just power through and do it all at one? I think it might be better for people to, uh, for tomorrow. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, oh, hey, dude, I uh, painted your eye today. I don't know if you saw I, I emailed you. For those of you that don't know, uh, to get away from all of this hell, to get to get away from all of this, if you guys don't know, let me get uh, my other screen up here and let me share this with you. For those that don't know, I actually have a, oh, this is the wrong, I guess I, guess I can show this. Okay, so I, I lost the screen. Let me see. So I have an art channel, but I also have an art Instagram. And on my Instagram, I post uh, like updates that I've been doing. Uh, Russell Hall, thank you for the super chat. Go to the doctor. No. No, I got the headache because I had to read that. And so what I do is on my art channel, uh, which I will find in a moment. Uh, let me let me get this open. Uh, art YouTube. There we go. So I have a channel where I do art videos and art live streams. I actually do a lot of streaming over here on my art channel, if you guys can uh, see right here. And so I did like a whole series when I went through like different types of uh, like paint mixing. I do act like you know, full videos on there. There's one up there on different palettes. Uh, but so I've been painting and I just stream it. And so you guys get to sit there and hang out with me while I do painting streams. And one of the things that I've been doing is this thing called the eye project. And so this is the eye project. And so what my idea was, was I wanted to just do a bunch of like eye studies. And I thought it would be like a cool concept to like just have a bunch of eyes on a wall. I thought that would be cool. So I said as a way to be interactive with the chat is if you guys want to participate, you guys could send me a photo of your eye. Uh, let me know what name you want me to use for the live stream, what your eye color is. And like, just please don't wear makeup because trust me, the painting will come out much better. And so this is an example. This was the first photo that was submitted to me. And this is from a, a gentleman named Gabriel. And so this was the picture. This is the painting. And then this is it with the gold leafing. And so I post the updates uh, on my art Instagram. So these are the ones like, so this is the one uh, that Gabriel sent to me. And so there's the photo. Uh, this is, I posted the thing for the, the chart. I record time lapses on my phone along with doing the live stream. So then you get like a, a quick little time lapse video. And so you guys get to see me painting and like the whole process of painting an eye. So if you guys are interested in having me paint your eye, uh, just email me all of that, all of the stuff, like the photo of your eye, the name you would like me to use for the live stream. So if you want to watch uh, the live stream and then uh, whatchamacallit, uh, don't, uh, don't wear any makeup and, you know, stuff like that. And if you are interested in purchasing your eye once I'm done and like I've done like my whole like little thing where I have all these eyes on the wall. Uh, I'm more than happy uh, to sell it to you because obviously it's your eye. I'm not going to not sell it to you. And so I just have a standard uh, price for everyone, which is just 80 bucks that covers shipping and like, you know, me packing it, me shipping it, all of the supplies I use and all, you know, my time going into it. Uh, I think it's a pretty reasonable price. Uh, I think that's like the cheapest painting you will ever get from me. Uh, Steven Giblin, thank you for that. Uh, get you some pain meds and let's hang out tomorrow. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I will. I'll do a follow-up live stream tomorrow on the other topics, but thank you for that. Uh, Shane Keena, thank you for Super Chat. Uh, do you enjoy doing abstract art? Not really. I like, uh, I like impressionistic, uh, art. I feel like I get the most enjoyment out of doing that, but part of my OCD is like, I want things to be perfect. But so when you see like my plain air paintings and even this, it's, a uh, it's a little bit more detailed, but I definitely would say that I paint with like an impressionistic style. But thank you for the super chat. Uh, so this was one. This was uh, Patrick. That was, I think, the second one. This is the one that I painted uh, yesterday. This was a gentleman named Noah. This was his eye. He was a little bit young. Uh, I think like maybe a teenager. Uh, and so I painted his eye. It was very, very smooth. And oh my gosh, this guy had some of the thickest eyebrows and eyelashes I have ever seen for somebody that was, uh, you know, very light, uh, his, his hair, it was like dirty blonde. Like it wants to be brown. Like the roots of his hair are brown, but like the tips of his eyebrows and his eyelashes were blonde. So it was very, uh, interesting to paint. And so this is like, obviously I, I filmed the time-lapse video. So this is all up on my art Instagram. If you guys have Instagram and you guys want to follow, uh, this is where I kind of post my updates and I will be doing like some of my paintings that I've been working on for a while. Oh, see, see how it's like the tips and stuff. It's a, uh, yeah. And so then this is the painting that I painted today. And so this was one of the ones where this is why I actually asked for your eye color, because in this photo, 
it looked black. Uh, I thought he had uh, black eyes or like dark, dark, dark brown eyes. And he's like, no, my eyes are blue. I was like, what? Your eyes are blue. So I took some creative liberty and like made it just like a, a darker blue so you can see it. But so this was the one that I painted earlier today before this stream. So again, if you guys are interested in me painting your eye, um, let's see, Anna brow shaming. Oh, his, I had to add more hairs because you could not see his eyebrows. I was like, he's got like John Malin. Um, but so that was the painting that I did earlier. So again, if you guys are interested, these are the references for what type of photo to use to send to me. The one obviously that I was using today was, uh, was at a little bit of a different angle, which is fine. It does make for an interesting composition. But if you want the best result, I would recommend something like this. And so that's just my own personal preference on it. But uh, yeah, and so also the I do have different types of leafing if you're interested. This is just uh, in gold leafing. I also have silver and copper if you're interested. And I could always get different types, but those are usually the best one. And also this is on my uh, my art Twitter page. So I post the videos there if you don't want, if you don't have an Instagram and you just you'd rather follow me on Twitter. Uh, let me post this in the comment section. Oh, here you guys go. And so that's where you guys can follow me. And again, if you guys want to follow me on my art YouTube channel, I stream there almost every single day. And so it's not like Star Wars talk. I do sometimes talk about Star Wars, but if you guys are interested in seeing me streaming more and me live, I spend a lot more time streaming over there on that channel than I do on this channel because I'm doing live painting videos. So if you guys are interested in that, go ahead and subscribe to my art channel. It's just the art of Anna TSWG Studios. And also over here, I have uh, other channels that you might like if you are interested in art. Uh, obviously, I have my main channel and then my live channel where my live streams are re-uploaded to. But if you guys are uh, interested in other art channels that I like, that I watch, that I keep up with, these are the ones to follow. So I got Andrew Tischler, uh, Daria Cal. Uh, Cesar Santos, Nerd Forge, it's a Gunda or it's a Gumpla, which is my friend's channel. Uh, Carla Grace and James Gurney. So those are some fantastic artists. I'd highly recommend. Uh, everyone, uh, let's go raid. I think Ethan is streaming. Let's go raid Comic Artist Pro Secrets channel. Uh, Bastard won't didn't send me a link, so I'm not invited. So I will not be there. But everyone, if you haven't smashed the like button, smash it please and thank you. Let's go raid Ethan, say that Star Wars Girl raid. Uh, this video is going to be unlisted and re-uploaded to my secondary channel, that Star Wars Girl Live. I will go live tomorrow to read all of those retcons that they did with Star Wars. Everyone, thank you so much for watching and going through that hell with me. I will have a video out on all of this that I just read. It will be out tomorrow. And everyone, until next time, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone. I'll tell you where I thought I came in. In the forest when the, the lightsaber goes like this and flies off. I said, oh, what a great